afternoon, everybody. So lovely to be here this morning. So many years ago, it was a Sunday afternoon, and Sean and I, it was before kids, and we just wanted to rest and get ready for the week. And we heard someone coming into our garden. I've made sure that these people aren't here today. And we knew they were heading for the door, but we just wanted to rest. So we hid, and we lay flat on our lounge floor, and they knocked, and they knocked, and they called, and they called, and we lay, (laughs) and we hid. And that afternoon, we didn't accept their visit, and their fellowship that they wanted to give us that afternoon. We decided to reject them, and we didn't open the door, and respond to their constant knocking, and their constant calling of our names. In Revelation 3 verse 20, it says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and eat with that person and they with me. This particular verse was directed to a church of the time which which had grown lukewarm. And their only option was to repent. And when they repented, to accept Jesus back into fellowship with them. And Jesus was standing at the door of that church because he loved them so much. And he wanted to be in fellowship with them. He wanted to be a part of them. This afternoon, I really believe that Jesus is saying the same to you and I. Will you accept me? To accept something, you do so by believing that it is true, whether you have the proof or not. Whether we believe, we come to believe because we recognize something or someone as valid or correct. To accept something, you need to receive it. And so accepting is a verb. It's something that we need to do. It involves action from my side and your side. When someone stands at the door, we often can't see. If the door is here, we often can't see them or who it is behind the door. But we can hear their knocking, and we can hear their calling, even though we can't see who they are. And when Jesus stands at the door of our lives, he knocks and he calls. And sometimes we can't physically see him. But we can hear the knocking. And we can hear the calling of our name as he calls us personally. But the door still stands in the way. What could that door be in your life? Perhaps this afternoon it's doubt that stands in your way. Maybe it's actually I want more proof. I want to physically see Jesus. I can't see him. Maybe it's just the choice that you've made to block that voice out. Even though he stands there and he calls your name personally, you have decided to rather block it out. Maybe you've decided to rather listen to the voices, and there are many of them that come from the world around us. Or maybe it's just the ignoring of the knocking that you know has been going on. Or perhaps just like us, you've decided to hide. When we choose to open that door, it says in this verse that Jesus comes and he wants to dine with us. He wants to have a candlelit dinner with us. And what he does when that happens is that we break down that door and we turn it into a dining room table. And we sit at that dining room table with Jesus as he comes and he wants to dine with us. And when he does that, he wants to do it because he wants an intimate relationship with you and I. He wants to feast with us, and we feast with him and find out who he is and get intimate with him and his word. Debbie spoke last night and said that one of the ways that we need to believe is by having an intimate relationship with Jesus. And when we decide to open that door and break down that barrier of whatever it is, doubt, whatever stands in the way, we're able to have that intimate dinner with Jesus. Our acceptance is when we choose to have faith in Jesus without all the proof and when we make the choice to accept. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We cannot see what is on the other side of the door. Yet as we walk towards that door in faith and as we open it up, we accept that faith, we accept the knock and we accept the calling. When we do that, We receive Jesus Christ through faith. We open the door and that barrier, whatever it may be, is broken. 
and it turns into a place of intimacy between you and Jesus as you enter into that amazing personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is a never, never a forced entry, and this is what I love. Jesus stands at the door, and he knocks, and he calls like a gentleman. He will never force his way in. He just keeps calling, and he just keeps knocking. Because if he had to force his way in, then it would be something that you were told to believe. And that will never, ever be a hard thing. It has to be something that comes from your heart. And so he stands, and he knocks, and he calls, and he knocks. And you can hide, and you cannot open it, but he will continue to stand there like a gentleman until you have accepted by just opening that door of faith, and it becomes part of a heart decision. Jesus wants to come and dine with you because he wants to become a part of you. He wants the most intimate relationship with you. Will you choose today to hide away when the calling and the knocking of the door is there and rather decide to reject him just like we did that day with those visitors standing at the door? Or do you say today, I'm actually tired of denying that voice that's calling me. I'm tired of pretending that there's not this knocking on my heart that Jesus is doing. And actually, I need to say today that although I don't have all the proof, although maybe not all my questions have been answered yet, I would like to take that step of faith and open that door of acceptance to accept Jesus and enter into the most intimate and personal relationship with him. Grace is God's acceptance of us. Faith is our acceptance of God accepting us. You may be in a place this morning where, or this afternoon where you have already taken that step. You have already had this intimate relationship with Jesus. But perhaps that intimacy is not as it used to be. And it's not because Jesus left the dining room table. It's because you moved your seat. He has never, ever changed position. He still sits there waiting to have that amazing, intimate, candlelit dinner with us. But you've moved your seat. And in the same way, that takes action from our part. To just take our seat and to move it back to that place of intimacy. You may have seen the story that's been circulating on social media about the twins in the womb that are discussing life after birth. And I love the part where they actually speak about their mother. And the one says, mother, you actually believe in mother? That's laughable. If mother exists, then where is she now? The second one says, she's all around us. We are surrounded by her. We are of her. It is in her that we live. Without her, this world would not and could not exist. The first one says, well, I don't see her. So it's only logical that she doesn't exist. To which the second twin replied, sometimes when you're in silence and you focus and you really listen, you can perceive her presence and you can hear her loving voice calling down from above. This afternoon, I'd like to tell you the same to your answer or question. Where is Jesus now? How can I accept him? Jesus is all around us. We are surrounded by him. We are of him. It is in him that we are given life. Without him, this world would not and could not exist. And his Loving voice is speaking loud and clear to all of us today. It is up to us to believe and take action to accept and break down that door. Break down any barrier. Break it down and create an intimate dining room table where you step into that beautiful intimacy with Jesus Christ.